module 3 solid mensuration so for our learning outcomes after completion of the course the student should be able to so number one solve problems which involves areas of plane figures and volumes of solid the number two the number two apply cavaliers and volume theorems so based from our learning outcomes so number one if you will take a look at areas of plane figures and also volumes of solid so meaning most of the time you are going to solve for area of plane figures and of course volumes and then you are going to apply cavaliers and volume theorems so for our introduction solid mensuration is the study of measure of volume area height length and many more so this subject is used extensively in the practice of engineering then what is a polygon the polygon is a closed plane figure bounded by straight lines for example triangle quadrilateral pentagon hexagon etc so for triangle we already discussed it in trigonometry and then pentagon and some other regular polygon then useful formulas for polygon so number one sum of interior angles so say for example you have your pentagon so that interior angles are this so if you are going to solve the sum of all of these five interior angles the formula to be used is quantity n minus 2 multiplied by 180 wherein n is the number of sign so if you are going to solve the interior angle of the pentagon that is simply quantity 5 minus 2 multiplied by 180 which is equal to 540 then number 2 formula interior angle of a regular polygon now for number 2 if we want to solve only one interior angle so from this formula just divide this by number of side so therefore if we will divide this by the number of side which is 5 of the pentagon so we are going to get 108 number 3 number of diagonals say for example again we have a pentagon so if we are going to solve all of the diagonals inside of the polygon the formula to be used is this one capital N is equal to N over 2 of course N is the number of diagonals N number of sides again so for pentagon that is simply equal to 5 so meaning we have 5 diagonals or we can draw 5 diagonals so we have here 1 2 3 4 and 5 5 diagonal okay for our first subtopic plane figures so number one is the triangle triangle is a closed figure bounded by three straight lines called sides it can also be defined as polygon of three sides we will already discuss this triangle in our previous module then area area is a measure of size or extent of a plane surface area is measured in square units such as square millimeter square centimeter and meter the formula to solve the area of the triangle is number one if the given is the base and the altitude the formula is simply area equals to base or one half base times height so this formula is illustrated by this figure we have an oblique triangle with the base b and height of h or the altitude the next formula for area of a triangle given two sides and the included angle again this formula is illustrated by this figure so theta is the interior angle and the two sides are a and b so if we have two sides a and b and the included angle the formula to be used to solve the area is simply one half a b sine theta next formula to solve for the area using heron's formula if the given is three sides or the three sides a b and c the formula to be used is simply area equals to square root of s multiplied by the quantity s minus a multiplied by s minus b multiplied by s minus c where in a b and c again are the sides of the triangle and s 
will be solved or can be solved using this formula. So, one half quantity A plus B plus T. Or that is called this, the mi perimeter. Next, formula. Given one side and the triangles. So, given a side A, we are going to use area equals to A square, meaning this is the given, given side. And the triangles are angle B, C, and A. So, this is capital A. And if the given is side B, okay, so we have B square sine A sine C over sine B. The difference between these three are, of course, the sides and the angle at the denominator. So if you have A or side A, you have your angle A or the angle opposite of the side. And if you have side B, you have angle B here. In similar for side C, if we have side C here, we have sine C here. Next polygon is quadrilateral, a polygon of four sides. So first quadrilateral is the square. So the formula to solve the area for the square is simply square of side. So we know that square have two equal sides. So this time our variable for the side of the square is A. Then for the perimeter, that is simply for A. Then number 2, rectangle. So the area is base times height. The height is actually the A or side A. So you can replace or put H here which is equal to your A. Or simply replace this by AB. The next, yung parallelogram. If the given is the base and the altitude, a equals to B, yung base, then yung height. Take note tayo H dito ay yung perpendicular distance mula dito hanggang dito sa baba. Then, second formula, given two sides and the included angle. Okay, so the formula is A equals to AB sine theta. Then, letter C, given diagonals and their included angle. So the formula is simply area equal to 1 half d1 d2 sin theta d1 and d2 are the diagonal the number 4 given base and altitude so number 4 is rhombus so the formula is simply area equal to a multiplied by h when letter b given a side and included angle so a capital a or the area is equal to a square sin theta then C, given diagonals. So, take note, here we have uh, perpendicular diagonals. And the formula to be used to solve the area is simply 1 half D1 multiplied by D2. And for the trapezoid, that is simply area equals to 1 half quantity A plus B times height. So, the variable is not fixed. It's up to you. Kung halimbawa gusto niyo ng ibang variable, Pwede rin. Basta yung concept ay yung ito, 1 half, then A plus B meaning yung sum ng dalawang base, then yung H ay yung height. Number 3 is circle. So again, this is a very common figure. So the formula to solve the area of a square is either 1 pi over 4 D square in terms of diagonal or pi R square if we have the given radius. Then for circumference, that is simply pi d or 2 pi r. Again, d here is 2 r. Then, semicircle. Semicircle is only a half circle. So, therefore, the area is in the half of this. So, pi over 8 d square or pi over 2 r square. Then, number 5. Sector of a circle. So, the area is 1 half theta r square. Then, we have s is the arc length. S here is the arc length equal to theta multiplied by R. Then, take note that theta is in region. So, if the given is in degree, you need to convert that into region. Number 6 is ellipse, pi AB from the area, then circumference, 2 pi square root of A square plus B square over 2. Then, number 7, parabolic segment, half of parabola. So, the formula to solve the area is simply 2 thirds L multiplied by D. 
Example 3.1.1. So first example for this topic or module. So find the area of the largest circle that can be cut from a square of edge or inches. What is the area of the material wasted? So we have a given square with edge of 4 inches. So this is the square with side 4 inches. So we are going to find the largest circle which can be cut. So meaning if this is your square, we are going to cut a circle inside of it with the radius of 2 inches. Because this one of the diameter of the circle is equal to the edge of the square. So that is simply 4 over 2. So that is equal to 2. We have a radius of 2 inches. Okay. For the area of the circle, first unknown, area subscript circle. So this is the area of the circle, pi r square. So pi multiplied by your r. r is 2 inches square. Or you can also use pi over 4 d square. So the diameter here is 4 inches. So the answer for the area of the circle is 12.56 square inch. Then the next unknown is the area of the material wasted. Okay. So basically, if this is 4 inches and then we cut a circle inside of it, so the material wasted is this, this one, and this one. So to solve that, we will simply subtract the area of the circle to the area of the square. So that is simply area now square minus area of circle. Okay. So the area of the square can be solved using our formula A square. So that is simply 16 square inch. So this solution can be put before this line. So you can put that here. So 16, yung area ng square minus yung area ng circle dito. So, ang sagot ay 3.43 square inch. So, number 2. A hollow shaft has an outside diameter of 5.45 cm and an inside diameter of 2.25. Calculate the cross-sectional area of the shaft. Okay? So, this is only the cross-sectional area. So, ito yung hollow shaft. Then, ito yung kanyang cross-section. Higin natin mo yan. Or yung tinignan mo siya sa dulo, ito yung ating figure. Cross-section lang to Pero ito yung siya. So, we're going to solve the cross-sectional area or the shaded portion. Or if you'll take a look at our figure, we have two circles. And then if you want to solve this shaded part, that is simply the difference of the bigger circle and the smaller one. So you can put a variable for the area of shaded area, like for example, area of shaded equal to area ng larger, ano? then area of smaller. Masa inyo kung gusto nyo ilagay yung larger dito or smaller, bigger, smaller, something like that. So dito kasi yung solution dito naka, parang nakasentence siya. So, yung area ng mga ang malaki ay pi over 4 d square. Ito yun. Ito yung di na malaki dito ay yung di dito. So, yung 5.45 cm. Then, yung maliit. So, 2.25. Again, ito ay area ng circle in terms of diameter. So, the answer here is 19.35 cm.